Hello and welcome back to the uh, discussion about uh, JavaScript and uh, today we'll uh, discuss about one of the core topics of the language, one of the heart uh, actually of how the JavaScript is working. Uh, we mentioned that uh, many times uh, uh, but today is the, the time to uh, see that uh, in detail and uh, understand how it works. Uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, classes and modules, uh, because we, which are uh, a basic uh, component of the language, but especially uh, about the um, prototype mechanism uh, that is used uh, for creating these classes and modules. So nearly half of the, uh, the first part of, of, the, of this lecture will be about prototypes, uh, and then we'll move on how to apply those uh, concepts uh, for defining uh, what they are called the ES6 classes or the ES6 modules. So let's let's dive in into the prototypes, uh, which is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of the uh, most complex topics uh, in JavaScript to to grasp to understand. But it's also the basic mechanism by which all the object-oriented uh, uh, say mechanisms in the in the language uh, are actually working. Um, you see a lot of uh, you will see a lot of references uh, here in the slides and also in the um, in the uh, in, in other slides uh, with examples uh, and i suggest that you could try to also go and and check on some of them um okay uh, we say that uh, javascript is a, a object oriented language in terms of objects and the language is actually based on a strange mechanism called the prototypes uh, so the object orientation in uh, JS is based on these uh, uh, strange prototypes uh, and uh, uh, not really on classes. We will see later that classes are just a sort of a syntactic code uh, to cover the, the intricacies of the prototype mechanisms. Um, the basic uh, concept is that every JavaScript object, all of them, near, yes, or every object in JavaScript, uh, has a property internally. Uh, which is normally hidden so you cannot mm, query it uh, uh, very easily uh, it's called the prototype okay with this strange syntax with the double square brackets uh, it doesn't mean that you you, you will write these brackets uh, it's just an abstract representation so um, and every object and this property points to another object so every object is linked to another object through the prototype property so it's another property of the object, but it's predefined by the language, and every object has one. So every object is linked to every uh, to some other object. If you want to check which uh, which is the other object that is linked, uh, you can use the get prototype of method, static method of object, that giving an object uh, will tell you which is the other uh, destination of the prototype uh, link. Uh, uh, practically, when you are debugging, uh, it may be easier also to use the underscore, underscore, proto, underscore, underscore, uh, which is a deprecated way of accessing the prototype chain, but maybe it's faster to write than get prototype off. So I would suggest when writing your code, always use the official way, the get prototype off method. But maybe when you're debugging, you can also use proto uh, because it's faster to write. Uh, you know that maybe it will disappear in the future. It's de deprecated things, uh, several versions. I, well, basically, it has never been standardized. Uh, but uh, browsers and also Node, uh, they implement it. And so we can rely on it uh, at least uh, in the interactive way. So uh, what is the, the role of this second object? So first object has a prototype uh, uh, property and links to another object. This other object is called uh, an object prototype that contains some properties and we will see how we can access these prototype uh, properties of the prototype hmm? uh, by the way this object prototype is also an object so it may contain another or it will contain not may uh, for sure it will contain another prototype property that will link to a third object and this third object is, is an object is a will be the prototype for the second one and it will also have a prototype property and so on so you can follow a chain is like a linked list uh, of, of uh, objects pointing to objects pointing to objects through the prototype property uh, of course the chain will finish when you we find an object where the prototype property is null hmm? it points to null and usually it is only one object 
uh, I say usually because some libraries are playing tricks sometimes, but uh, usually there's only one object uh, that has uh, the um, empty prototype, uh, which is the function object, uh, which is the top level. You can think of it as the top level of the inheritance tree. Hmm? Um, there's no tree, there's no inheritance here, but uh, at least you can think of the, the object from which all the other objects descend or are linked to. Um, by the way, there is some confusion or we'll try to manage that because uh, uh, functions hmm, especially functions that are used as constructor functions and we'll see later classes which is just another way of writing the constructor functions you remember constructor functions are those that we call with new to create new objects huh? that have the, the the purpose of creating new objects they have another attribute which is called prototype okay just to add to the confusion uh, so it's a, a, a normal attribute called dot prototype. It's not uh, underscore proto. It's not the one that you get through the get prototype. It's not the abstract uh, prototype, but it's a normal prototype attribute that points to another object. Points uh, not to the prototype of the function itself, but will point to the prototype of the objects that this function will construct. So whenever we call uh, uh, create an object through a construction function, this construction function knows which will be the prototype object for the new object that the function itself is, is creating. Um, and so let's try not to confuse them. We, we'll try to see a couple of, of, of drawings of, of diagrams uh, uh, where we, um, we can uh, uh, appreciate the difference between the two. Just, uh, uh, don't get scared because they are called in the same way. Okay, so let's, let's try not to confuse ourselves. Uh, the language is already confusing uh, enough uh, by itself. So what happens? I try to uh, analyze a, a fragment of code, hmm? which is a very simple fragment of code. I defined a, a function person that will create a very simple uh, object. Uh, just one object with one property called name. We already saw the syntax for creating objects and we see that we define a function and we create an object uh, by calling the new operator on the function itself. Um, this new will create a new object and will assign properties to this object. Hmm? The meaning of this in this context will come later. We'll have a special lecture uh, for this, but for the moment, just trust me that in constructor function, when you call them with new, this is the object that we are constructing. Or may, we may just create a, an object from a library function. Hmm? Uh, a new date, we already reused that in the exercises, it's another object. Or you can create an object just with a literal syntax. Okay, so it's nothing strange. Uh, every, uh, all of this we already uh, we are, uh, was already um, appeared in, in, uh, in previous exercises and previous classes, and uh, there, here are some examples of what will be printed uh, if we log uh, uh, the three variables. So let's try to see on the right hand side of the slide uh, how they are internally represented. So let's start from the simplest one, R. R is a row object, <laughs> it's a, just a literal object. Let's say it has two attributes, minimum and maximum, for example, numerical attributes, we don't care. And so R is the object, hmm? points to the object, actually. Uh, this object, of course, uh, has a prototype property, as all, or any other object, and that points to a, speci a special object, which is called object.prototype. Object.prototype is the prototype coming from the object function. Hmm? Uh, well, we'll see that uh, in a second. And uh, this object prototype is the top level prototype for all the programs. In fact, uh, its prototype is null. Hmm? So every time, every time we create an object with the literal syntax, the prototype of this object is the object prototype. Uh, we will ch we could change it later, but by default, uh, uh, all uh, uh, say uh, directly created objects directly depend on the object class. Hmm? I'm calling that class even if it's not it would not be the proper uh, definition. Um, let's see. D is another uh, object that is being created uh, through um, a constructor function. 
new date in that case the object d has a prototype that points to date.prototype it's a different prototype uh, what happens we'll see in a moment that the object prototype will contain all the on the functions uh, that are accept accessible to every object date prototype will contain all the functions that are accessible to date objects so the prototype is where the methods and the properties of the, all the objects uh, uh, sharing a given class uh, are stored so, and uh, so d is of type date because its prototype derives from the date prototype and date prototype also has a prototype um, property of course that will link uh, to the object prototype so in this case we have two two step chain the object the date prototype the object prototype that will end with now hmm? so if we are creating functions with library uh, sorry object with library functions this is what will happen so actually d has some properties of itself plus it may have access to the pro the properties defined in the date prototype plus it will have access to all the functions defined in the object prototype hmm? so we have three levels of uh, of access of access to the properties and what happens if we create our own function well the picture becomes a bit more complex because we are introducing introducing the function and we are introducing the object let's focus on the object first because it's easier uh, p here is an object uh, created by the person function so uh, the prototype of p will be person.prototype so as we said every function has a prototype property you see the difference between prototype and uh, square brackets prototypes this is a normal object called function name dot prototype like here like here this is not uh, the hidden chain hmm? it's just an explicit uh, property which is predefined uh, for every function and this person prototype will uh, is linked uh, to the object prototype so if we from the point of view of the object d and p are exactly the same in which they are objects that point uh, to the prototype of the function or class call them function call the class is the same in javascript uh, that uh, uh, created that object so in this case d was created by the date function p was created by the person function so d is linked to the date prototype and p is linked to the person prototype uh, so nothing there's nothing different uh, between objects that we create with our own creator functions and objects that we create we, with the uh, library functions uh, we, are, we are also defining the function person hmm? so person is another object of type is a, it's a function so as a function it has two attributes of course it does have a prototype of every object plus it has the prototype property the explicit one when we write person dot prototype you are we are actually accessing the prototype property of the person object person is the object representing the function okay and how do we know that person is representing a function because its prototype is function dot prototype so uh, this syntax function name uh, and uh, and braces is one way of creating an object of type function so instead of writing new instead of writing um, an object literal we are writing function it's just a syntax for creating an object of type function in fact the 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 person object which is a function as a prototype linking to function prototype which of course links uh, to objects so function prototype means that a function is an object and but person is a function hmm? so this is how we read it we read the prototype chain by saying that r is an object d is a date which is an object p is a person that is an object person is a function which is an object of course and so on and so if we dig into the internal of the language we'll see that function that prototype assumes that it will also be a function object which is a bit strange because both prototype uh, point to the same uh, <laughs> uh, object uh, because the function object is a function itself uh, but it's also uh, 
generating objects of type function so the second prototype we, we, uh, refers to the generation of the objects but uh, probably we don't need to go into this uh, internal detail hmm? uh, so um, I, I repeat again the prototype chain tells me the types of the objects how they relate to each other and how we can access the, the attributes uh, uh, by navigating the, the, the chain uh, of prototypes the prototype property is applied only to functions and we tell us the type of or the explicit prototype of the objects that the function is creating so person creates p in this statement here with the new statement it means that p is linked to an object prototype which is taken from the prototype property of person okay this is the basic so let's uh, try to to have this uh, diagram in mind because we'll uh, uh, in, we'll, we'll need it uh, in uh, in the, the following um, so just to remember that everything ends at object.prototype you see that object.prototype up there is the ending point of everything everything's pointing there and nothing goes out of there because there's a null pointer null reference um, and object.prototype is the topmost prototype you know in all, in all programs um, and it defines uh, the methods that we are we are expecting to see in every object hmm? so uh, the reason why to string is defined for every object in javascript uh, is that uh, every object links uh, directly or indirectly to the object prototype hmm? and by the way all the objects created directly uh, have the same type have the same uh, uh, prototype which is object prototype directly mm. so uh, all literal objects uh, directly link uh, to the object prototype uh, if if you need to have intermediate prototypes you must create uh, uh, objects with functions or you should uh, modify the prototype later after creation but it's not recommended um, so is there a way of creating an object linked to another object directly uh, can in other words can a normal object uh, be used as a prototype for another object yes it can and uh, we don't need creator function for doing that we will use creator function because it's the normal way of the easiest way but uh, uh, in the, the language doesn't enforce that hmm? uh, we can use the create method object.create method uh, for uh, creating new objects and linking it to the prototype of objects. So I, I can create an object just with the braces and it will R and it will be an object linked to directly to object prototype. Or we can create an object R2 from an existing object. So in this case we are creating an object, an empty object, that uh, whose prototype is R. It's not R dot prototype, it's R itself. So the prototype property of R2 is R. And at this point, uh, we can add some properties to R2 as we want, hmm? because it's a new empty object that can be, uh, for, for which we can add new, new properties. Hmm? So this is a way, something strange, where we can say an object can inherit properties from another object. You don't get that in other object-oriented programming languages where inheritance is done at the level of classes. Here we are objects linking to objects. And, uh, and uh, means that through R2, we'll see in a moment, uh, that we can also access the properties of R, thanks to the, to the prototype chain. So how, uh, uh, how does the prototype chain, chain work? Uh, why is that useful? Uh, prototypes uh, are not the real inheritance so that uh, we, there's no real um, notion of type of an object uh, that determines uh, its functionality or its method uh, everything is get, gets down to the accessing of the object properties so when i write object dot property what happens uh, different things happen so the and this object dot property access uh, uh, just mimics uh, what would happen in the in the um, in an inheritance in a real inheritance scenario um, and accessing property is different uh, does different things uh, depending on whether you are reading or writing the property so 
if I f if I try to read a property of an object what JavaScript does is first checking whether this property is defined on this specific object so a dot property let's check whether this property is defined on a if it's defined well okay let's use that and return the value for that property if it's not defined we will search for this property name up on the prototype chain so we see on the prototype object whether does it define the property or not if not we go up a second step and so on and so forth until we reach now so until we find the property or we reach now if we find the property we return the value if we reach null then we return undefined so that's the reason why when you're using uh, when you are trying to use a, a property of an object uh, if the property is not defined in the object nor in any other prototype up, up the, um, along the chain you will uh, you will get undefined not an error but just the undefined value for writing the behavior is different usually writing property so assigning a value to a property a dot uh, property equal to zero will not navigate the property chain so we are not uh, changing a property defined uh, one step further one step higher hmm? uh, we are, we may also only change uh, properties on my object and by the way uh, so if the property is defined on the object okay i'm modifying that if the property is not defined in the object then a new one is created so if i'm writing a dot x equals zero i'm creating the property x on the object if by chance any other uh, object up in the prototype chain already defined a property called x in the same name well then we are shadowing the upper name so we are creating a new local property with the same name or the property that was on a higher object uh, we have an asterisk because this re this rule is not really true because if we have a setter function on the up, up on the chain uh, of inheritance that we are then the setter uh, function will be called uh, instead of creating a new local object but this is just a, a very tiny detail uh, i don't want to mix it here right now we just put the asterisk so that we remember that this rule doesn't apply 100 percent of the time uh, let's see that uh, working as an example uh, we have the r and r2 object that we created just a moment ago and uh, uh, if we read the, the mean property of r of course it's defined here is zero uh, we can set the minimum property of, of r to five so we are changing this value here of course it will become five what happens if we try to read the minimum property of, of r2 so r2 doesn't have a minimum property so we go up to r and check do you have a minimum property yes and what is the current value it's zero so we are linking to the value that are defined in r every modification to the property of the upper object will be immediately reflected in all the uh, lower objects that, that links to that uh, because actually uh, every time we are trying to use to read a property if the property is not here we are reading that property we are not copying properties there hmm? so it's not like uh, inheriting something that will make a copy of the property so that you have your own property no they are they are the properties of your prototype that you can read if you're modifying something in the prototype all the other objects will have this new modification or you can also add new properties here and this property will appear immediately on lower objects and um, and all the objects that, that they refer to that prototype on the other hand what happens if we modify a property below so for example we are trying r.max is 30 we know that uh, we modify r2.max is 50 and if we check r.max it's still 30 so what happens here is that uh, we are trying to write a property on r2 object the property doesn't exist and so it's created so we are actually here creating a new max property on r2 from this moment on if we read r2.max we will get the value here 
will not go through the prototype because max will be already defined here and so the max property of r is never involved in this statement a new property max is created on r2 so r.max is not changed so if we are changing something in the bottom of the prototype chain it will not change anything it will not affect the values uh, uh, up on the, on the of the upper objects on the prototype chain hmm? so this is the this is something that we we expect to do that so uh, uh, something lower cannot modify a value that will affect something higher um, and also will as affect all the other objects that share this prototype hmm? so it will be bad, bad design but there's nothing about inheritance here it's just a mechanism for accessing properties when i read a property if i don't find it i go up to the prototype chain if i if, uh, when i write a property if i don't find it i create it it's just this simple difference hmm? and uh, we also have the other way of creating an object so uh, we have three ways at the moment uh, that we know for creating an object the literal the braces the object.create where we specify explicitly another object to act as a prototype and the constructor function the constructor function um, uh, implies the, that we are using the new keyword hmm, in the in the function constructor and uh, in this case uh, uh, the calling of a function with the new keyword will uh, first create a new object and second assign to this new object p in this case uh, a prototype which is taken from the prototype property of the function itself so every function when we define the function uh, already uh, automatically gets a prototype property this prototype property is uh, in particular is a property which is called so it's the property of the prototype object um, as a property called constructor that points back to the function itself so this is just for constructor function right um, when you have when they define a function that can be used as a constructor this function already has a prototype property this prototype property points uh, to an object which is specially created automatically created by the compiler and this uh, of course has a prototype which is an object so nothing special here and there's an additional property called constructor this constructor remembers uh, who constructed those objects so uh, it points back to the same function object okay so if we get uh, we, we create a new object here with the new we are getting the object here the prototype of, the, of this object is the person dot prototype may this person prototype may have properties defined and now we understand that if we define any properties on the function prototype then all the objects created by that function will also have and share those properties values methods whatever you want all the properties defined in the function dot prototype are accessible can be accessed in read mode by all the objects created by that function thanks to this link and also if we want we also have, we already have a p dot prototype dot constructor that will tell us uh, the name of the function that creates the object so it's also another way of discerning the type of an object compared to the type of another object hmm? so let's just remember this this property here which is automatically created but in some cases we need to mangle it we need to correct it so this is just a, a, a variation and something additionally that the interpreter does when you are creating an object through a, a function and uh, i try to summarize uh, um, uh, what happens in the different language constructs uh, when uh, accessing properties through the prototype chain uh, first of all um, we distinguish the properties between the own properties and we call them inherited properties that means uh, the properties that are defined uh, on objects uh, which are up on the chain hmm? up the, on the prototype chain so uh, when this is more than an exception than the rule when we are uh, iterating over an object uh, with the for in statement for a value in object uh, 
then uh, of course the iteration uses the uh, own property of the object but we'll also go when when once we finish the uh, the property on the object we'll go up into the prototype chain and so we'll search the properties on the uh, on the upper objects and so on hmm? uh, only the properties that are uh, tagged with enumerable but we are not taking about talking today about metadata on properties so there are again details here uh, to be discovered if you want but uh, let's keep it simple if we can uh, the idea is that if I iterate over the property of R2, I will get average and minimum and maximum in these uh, uh, four statements. Uh, the same if, you, if I'm trying to read the value, as we saw, I'm searching in my local properties. And uh, if it's not find, found here, I'm searching also in the, uh, in, in the object linked to the, top, through the prototype chain there. And these are the only cases, basically. If I'm trying to modify a property, then everything will end up locally. And so we'll, we are not searching whether a property with the name V exists in the upper prototypes, uh, except the asterisk, as I mentioned before. There's an exception for object with, sec with getters, uh, with setters, sorry, uh, which are for uh, virtual properties. Um, we see that uh, when we discuss about classes. And all the methods that you already know for accessing the, the properties of an object, so the values or the keys, the names of the properties, or the entries, or all the, all the pairs with the key value, only navigate through the local property. They don't go up to the prototype chain. And there's also a method called get on property names, which is basically the same as keys. Uh, and uh, uh, again, it's more explicit because it tells that I'm only searching the own properties hmm, of the object. Um, that's it. So the only the only moments in which the inheritance property is uh, uh, sorry, the prototype chain is searched is when I'm iterating with for, or we are reading a property, and this very little difference. Uh, uh, is enough for creating all the object orientation in JavaScript. So we are uh, studying a, a language where everything is based on prototypes instead of classes. So if you want, <laughs> you can have a very quick look at this uh, uh, comparison table uh, done by uh, um, the Mozilla Developer Network that just com tries to compare um, Java with JavaScript. Uh, for example, in Java, we have classes and we have instances. They are very distinct uh, uh, entities. Uh, we can inherit this class from class and create an instance from a class. You cannot create an instance from another instance, for example. And in JavaScript, uh, we only have objects. And every object can sort of inherit from an another object, uh, meaning that it can l prototype link to that other object. Uh, we have the difference between the class definition and the object instantiation. Uh, and here we are only objects that are created not by classes, but objects are created by functions. So constructor functions are just functions. Um, constructor methods in Java are special methods instead of inside the class. Uh, from the syntax point of view, we are using new. On the left, we are using new uh, on, a, um, on a class. In this case, we are using new on a function. Hmm? Uh, the hierarchy of objects uh, is determined by the subclasses. So in an object is linked to another object uh, if the subclasses extend each other. Hmm? Why? So the inheritance uh, tree is defined at the class level. In JavaScript, the inheritance tree the hierarchy of the objects is defined directly at the object level and uh, uh, goes through the prototype uh, associated with constructor function. And we are trying in the next slide, uh, um, that uh, group of slides, we are trying to, to learn how to do this uh, basically. So if we want to have one function that inherits, uh, inherits from another one, how can we proceed? Um, Okay, properties in Java are uh, inherited through the classes uh, and uh, in JavaScript are inherited through the objects. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the other difference is that, of course, in Java, the properties of an object are fixed at the time of creation. So you cannot add or remove properties later on. 
uh, while in JavaScript, uh, the creation of, the, of an object just defines an initial set of properties, and these properties can be not just modified uh, in terms of value, but also added or created or, destro or destroyed uh, dynamically during the, li the lifetime of the object in an object-specific way. Hmm. Okay, so we are more or less, we have a parallel between what we are used to in a classical uh, class-based uh, languages and prototype-based languages like in JavaScript. And so how can we use uh, the prototypes uh, for the reason, the main reason why we are using object-oriented languages, inheritance? So how can we define at one higher level a set of properties that we can we reuse at the lower levels hmm, automatically by inheritance? Um, of course, we can use that by linking uh, with prototypes objects, hmm? but I don't want to, uh, if I create many objects in my programs, I don't want to remember every time to link to the correct uh, or uh, other objects and so on, uh, because it gets uh, uh, boring and uh, error prone. So I want to uh, exploit constructor functions to create objects that are linked uh, in, in uh, with an inheritance tree so that uh, we can uh, ensure that the properties defined on one level will be also accessible by the uh, objects defined on the lower levels on the subclasses we don't have classes here we don't have subclasses but let's use the terminology for a moment hmm? uh, we have functions we have constructor function and so we can define a constructor function that constructs co construct a sub object that will we have sub um, uh, sub sort of a subclass of an object constructed by the main function. Let's try to, to see that through an example. So we'll, go, we'll see an example step by step with some code uh, that you can also try. Uh, I try to define a very simple object, a person, okay, with just a two or three attributes here and a, a method function. So person is a person, is an object, so it's a, fun, it's a creator function that creates objects with three attributes and one method, okay? These four, one, two, three, four, are just attributes. There's nothing special about them, four attributes. Three of them happen to be value attributes, and the fourth one happens to be a function attribute. Mm -hmm. We call it method, just to distinguish, but uh, uh, from the object point of view, there are just four attributes. Mm -hmm. It just happens that the value of the fourth one is a function value, okay? name edge and a preferred game for the, this person and so we have a play method that will print out uh, uh, that this person is playing a game hmm? the preferred game that we specify in the constructor very simple um, by the way there's also a second way in which me, we may add uh, function methods hmm? so we saw that we create a method by assigning a value to a property of the object good we may also uh, create a method by assigning a property to the prototype of the function so remember the prototype of the function is the automatically created prototype object uh, and this object will be linked automatically to every newly created uh, person so when I'm writing a new person the prototype of this new person will point here so if I'm adding some property here in the prototype object all the newly created objects, all the objects created by person, will see this function through the prototype chain. Hmm? So uh, there, it's another place where I can define a function on the prototype of the creator function. And for example, I, I define a function for showing the age of the person here. So we have two different attributes that, that are uh, printed by different functions. So these are two methods. I can create a method, let's say a method uh, in a, so a function that works on the object inside the object definition, inside the constructor function, or outside of the outside the constructor function by uh, manipulating the function prototype. What is the difference? Well, there are slight differences in performance because uh, in this way we are, we are paying a, pen, a time penalty and a memory penalty for creation because this function this property is defined on each and every person instance so if i have a million of persons this instruction is, ex is executed a million times while in this case it's only executed once on the other hand 
uh, when we are calling the function the function is di directly available on the object uh, and in the other case it's only available through a prototype call so it's a bit slower to call the function but i think that there are really minor points uh, um, the the real two differences are the, the last two points in this comparison um, for example uh, this function is defined at the prototype level so all the person objects will for sure have the same function while this is just defined initially on the property of the object but person p1 or in person p2 or in person p3 might also redefine this property later so we can change the property object by object do we want that so this is the better way do we want to be sure that the function is always the same on all the objects it's better to go on the right hand side uh, also this uh, uh, function definition is inside the main function constructor function and so it may also access uh, uh, all the variables defined inside the, the function if i define a const or a let variable here i can reach that through closure because syntactically it's in the same scope uh, this is defined outside so it cannot close over the local variables of the function it can only access through the this property this object um, uh, so it will access the properties of the object but not the local variables so the local private variables are not visible from the function defined as a prototype in the prototype they are def they are visible from the function defined in the body of the constructor function so these i think they are the two main uh, uh, differences that we should lead us in deciding what which kind of uh, of um, of syntax to use to define our method in most of the cases probably we don't care hmm? uh, it's more readable here because we have everything defined here and more versatile there because we can define it uh, separately but uh, um, these are the just uh, aesthetical properties hmm? okay so but from this moment uh, they are just properties okay function properties defined on the object defined on the prototype of the object we know that the search method is able to find uh, also the properties defined in, at the prototype level okay so we can call the method play or call the method show age to on any object that has been created from person hmm? it's nothing special uh, it's the same as the example that we saw before where the draw object as a prototype linked to the person.prototype object and show age is defined on the person.prototype object while play is defined on the draw object nothing special the step that we want to do is to create a subclass so called uh, so we must create a student function that will create object that inert from person okay so we can define a constructor function for constructing students right uh, how do we do that we define a new function and uh, the new function will uh, first uh, construct a person and then add the attributes that makes a student different from a person or more specific than a person so we may add new specific attributes new specific methods and uh, then we must ensure that the prototype chains uh, are correctly linked so let's see that in code so these are the one two three steps uh, for creating for defining a constructor function for a sub object first of all we must in the constructor of students we must first construct the person so we must in some way delegate the constructor of person we don't want to create a new person um, object because we already created a new student object remember that the, the function student uh, when we call it with new will create a new object so we want to populate this object uh, with the um, with the constructor with the operation of the constructor of person first of all so it's like the super call no? trying to call the constructor of the super object um, this is done with a special syntax it's called we'll see the meaning of call in the when we talk about this uh, for the moment let's just say that it's a syntax for calling um, the constructor the function person so person is still a function i'm calling that uh, by passing an object which is already created so instead of doing a new person that creates a new object i'm calling 
person on an, on, a, on an object that already exists so we are specifying that this object on which the person uh, constructor will work and this this is the object that is just being created by student hmm? so student creates an object we pass this object to per person so the call method is a, is a way of calling the function by giving one extra parameter which is the object in which uh, the method is being called and so person will not create a second object will just reuse uh, the object that students just created and with after that we can add other attributes for example that are only valid for students for example school hmm? so we are mo creating a person and just and then customizing this person to add the specific properties that are valid for students and uh, uh, does it work mm, yes or no because if i try to create a new student with this code so i specify all the properties of a person and then the school engineering uh, if i call the play method it's work because it's, it writes meg is playing tennis mm -hmm. uh, it works because uh, uh, when we create the person constructor the person constructor will uh, let me go back to this definition will define the play function on this and this is the object that we just created or the the mag object and so the play function is injected specifically on that object but the show edge function is not visible so you get an error if we try to get this function why well because uh, mag is an object that which is that is linked to to student prototype and this function is defined in person prototype so there are two different objects we must link them in some way explicitly and so we must uh, tell that student prototype should be an object whose prototype is person prototype so what we had is that mega links to student prototype but student prototype should be an object right now it will be just an object that links to object hmm? uh, look at person the person that prototype is automatically created and its prototypes point to object right now student will have a prototype that will also point to object we don't want that we want the student prototype to point to the person prototype so that if we don't find a property on the student property we will look on the person pro pro um, properties what person prototype properties to find them and this is where the show wedge function is defined here so a mag object is of course a student type of object but we must say that student type objects link to person prototype so this is a, a, a the classical way of i want to create an object this one whose prototype is uh, linked to an, an existing object this is the scope of object create object create we create a new object this one uh, linked to this prototype uh, the problem is that at this moment we are, we are throwing away the prototype that is already being automatically created for a student and create a new object but we must also uh, reinstate the constructor property because we are creating a new object and substituting it from, for that and uh, uh, so we must uh, also add manually a constructor um, property so that we are adding this property that points back to the construction function hmm? otherwise the constructor property will not be defined here and the prototype chain will find this one and so we'll say that meg constructor is person which is not true okay so we must specify it here so we must uh, when we define uh, this work it must only be done once when we define the um, the um, student function so it's not enough to call the uh, let's say constructor of the upper class we must also create the prototype and then constructor for this new created object we we just do that once 
so that uh, uh, you know that uh, the, what we do on the prototype will be applied on all uh, created objects so this is the correct way and at that point uh, uh, we can also uh, so the, the sorry the show edge function will work normally because it will be found by searching this prototype where the function is not found but then that other function that other prototype where the function is found uh, finally if we want we could also uh, redefine some functions for example uh, so for example we can redefine show age in the student prototype because we want to print something different and of course we can also from the uh, redefine function call the function defined at the higher prototype levels we know where these functions are are in the function dot prototype dot property and we want to call them on an, on an object different from what has been created by them we just can use the, the, the call function here hmm? so we, we are uh, specifying which function yeah, at which level of hierarchy we, of course uh, we are doing everything by hand this is the complete uh, uh, code of our example so i suggest you can try it or try some something similar just to get familiar we are uh, obtaining inheritance just by using functions and by being aware of how the prototype mechanism is working it's a bit heavy because all this call and dot prototype uh, uh, operations are explicit and we must remember to do them otherwise uh, uh, the objects will not work correctly so we are taking a bit of responsibility of setting up the prototype chain correctly but this is actually the essence of how uh, methods are called uh, our objects are defined our inheritance work uh, works uh, inside JavaScript mm -hmm. these are the basic mechanisms nothing is it may be a bit confusion because it works on a prototype object property of every object plus uh, the prototype explicit object of function objects that are used as constructors once we understand these two how they are linked uh, and we can manipulate them and then everything is, is sort of easy to understand uh, fortunately there will also be more simplified syntaxes that are, have been defined in the in the more recent versions of javascript and we will uh, and in particular the class syntax which is a very simplified way of doing this we'll see that in the second part of this of, of this video for the moment i will stop here and let you meditate uh, on this working prototype i suggest you try the code you just let you try the debugger you stop and try to see this property what are those values really to get a feeling of, of what's happening because otherwise uh, uh, it will be easy to to miss what is really happening and don't understand uh, how it's working and these concepts are, are are useful for understanding classes and for understanding the behavior of, of this which are the next uh, uh, lectures that are coming up but in the second part of this uh, of this lecture or today's lecture of course we are going to see the, the easy way of doing that with classes